at all. Mike's company sent him like, like Ooh. actual ones right. that are supposed to be like noise canceling. And he's like, I'm not trying these. I have my own ones. I don't want to use these. Oh, are you kidding me? I figured he'd be like, oh, I'm home. Oh, hi, honey. Hi, kids. You Can't think, hear you. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we were homeschooling, those were busted out. But, you know, for now, we're still in school. Nothing right. would. Madam All right. President, you've got 7.30 if you want. All right, it's 7.30, guys. Ready to do this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Recording in progress. All right, attention. This will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial in information printed on this agenda. Uh, instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All right, um, call to order. Can I have a call to order, please? Here, I'll do the roll call for you. Board President Ruggieri. Here. Director Case. Here. Director Kilkenny. Here. Director Oyserman. Here. And Director Shea. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. And then going forward, we're going to adopt the agenda. Does anyone have any changes to add to the agenda tonight? All right, no changes. All right, then the agenda is adopted or does this need to go to public comment? No, you can just adopt as presented. All right, adopted as presented. Um, moving on to the consent calendar, we have three items um, we need to approve. Um, one is the resolution 2022-01, making findings and confirming the need to continue conducting remote meetings via teleconference of the Board of Directors, Fire Commission, and Park and Recreation Commission. B, draft minutes of regular meeting of December 14th, 2021, and C, bills paid numbers 5976 to 6039. Um, do I have a motion? I motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented. We don't have to, I'll second it, but I just had a question. We don't have to um, vote first before we adopt it? No, you'll vote. Vote, vote comes after. Oh, okay. 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 Well, I'll, I'll, I'll second, yeah. I'll second. Um, so do we have any questions or comments? Did we figure out the 30 day rule or mark? I don't recall that we we're just doing this board meeting or. That's yeah, you just, you just do it each board meeting. Uh, the advice that I got on the whole 30 day thing is you can't have another meeting past 30 days, but if you adopt the thing after 30 days without having another meeting you're fine okay thank you yeah any other questions or comments i have a question eric can you tell me how, how many pop-up tents were purchased for the 1200 um i would defer that to luke Okay. Luke, uh, we can't hear you if you're trying to talk. No, we can't hear you. Tested it. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yes. <laughs> um, let me uh, double check that for you, Bill. I was just curious. 
Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to double check the receipt, but I can get that info for you shortly. No worries. I'll see you next week. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, anything from the public? Yeah, one second. Stephen. Yes, hi. Uh, congratulations, Lisa, on your first day of being president. Um, uh, I, yeah, I had a couple questions and comments. Uh, first of all, um, as usual, the draft minutes we produce are insufficient record of what is, has taken place at these meetings. Um, I think it's important. You do important work. And why shouldn't the public have a record of what you're doing? Um, I hope this is something that particularly the uh, uh, new directors uh, would like to take a look at um, because, you know, quite frankly, you're not representing anybody if no one knows what you're doing. So um, now, and then I do have some, a few questions regarding the consent calendar. I notice um, uh, I'm, Luke's going to talk about this later, the Winterfest, and um, these bills uh, were paid by Robin and him to vendors, and I'm wondering why we do that, why it's not paid through the central account. It seems very inefficient and, um, you know, possibly um, makes it a little harder to audit uh, uh, what has transpired. Uh, I, I saw that we paid, um, for example, 500 bucks or more for the, the band. You know, who was in the band? I, was it anyone that we know? Um, and, you know, why are we hiring a band if we, we uh, you know, we have talent, we have children's choirs, we have all kinds of other talents that could be on display uh, at this fest, a annual festive event. And we don't, we're not a country club, we, we're a community. And um, so maybe Luke can answer uh, about the band. I'm waiting for an answer, Luke. Okay, is, is that the end of the comment? Yeah. I. I, I I just just general comments yeah I'd like to know what's how money is being spent and uh, I also uh, ask that uh, uh, maybe a little closer accounting would be appropriate uh, so we understand um, you know how this money is is being allocated is Luke gonna answer or is he gonna just Remain. We're waiting for you to complete Sorry. your comments. I, 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 okay, I'm, my comments are complete. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions the board has for me. If, um... Okay, if Luke is going to play games, that's that's not right. Okay, you're a public agency. Um... You work for us. I don't have any questions about. The band. Does, any, does anybody else have a question about the band? I'm assuming it's things like Venmoing people that we don't have a Venmo account because our CSD and things like that are occurring. I have no problem with that as long as there does documentation, which there seems to be since it's in the bills paid. I think his point was there might be musicians within our community who might be able to partake instead of paying somebody from an outside community or whatever. I think that was his more, that's what I got from him was that. I, I, I hear that, but at the same time, all musicians are hurting for money at this point. I don't think we're going to get anybody to donate their ability to do that and I, I know there's choirs and stuff but this was a jazz festival and we've been doing this for years and um we have various people who are available and this is what i i trust our our staff 
that they've reached out to the appropriate people. And I appreciate Stephen's concern and questions. And I am sure that we are trying to get local talent and people that people also want to hear. All right. And to echo, I, I, my expectation is that we are, we're doing our diligence um, in any, in any cost allocation to, to find the most reasonable price. Um, so I, I trust the staff in making those decisions. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, so can I, can I call for a vote to adopt the consent calendar or a vote sure. to approve the consent calendar? No problem. Board President Ruggieri. Uh, yay. Uh, Director Case? Aye. Director Kilkenny? Aye. Director Oysterman? Aye. And Director Shea? Aye. Thanks. Okay, moving on to public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. Do you have any public comment? One second, please. <laughs> Well, I assume from that non-response, uh, more information is needed. I was kind of curious whether it, it was Bill Hansel again uh, playing for uh, the community. I don't object to Bill playing or anyone else in the community. Um, I do think that uh, uh, you know community events should feature community people, and it's really not uh, how much we pay them. It's the fact that it's it it's they're from our community and reflect the people that are here. Um, I'm sorry that uh, you think that you need to to go outside our community, but uh, uh, you know the traditions that I've had in my family and in my community growing up. We always had uh, holiday corrals and. Uh, you know, it was a chance to, to see people in action, and uh, uh, I, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, so 2022 is here, uh, and the three new um, board members um, have a chance to reflect on what their first year meant, and uh, as well as uh, the, the two uh, other uh, members. And I, I ask you, did you achieve your vision? Uh, and I got to say that uh, I have been asking on pretty regular basis uh, for improvements to accessibility on our trails, which has been ignored. Um, and I'm going to be very critical uh, of uh, Luke, uh, who treated me so unkindly uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, Luke, two, two months ago, there was a request uh, for cleaning up uh, uh, the trees next to the, the uh, uh, tennis courts. It took two months for you to clean it up. I noticed it finally got done today. And, you know, for gosh sakes, you guys, we have three full-time people. We have two, uh, uh, two managers on top of them uh, who sh are directing the work, and the work is not getting done. Have you ever had hired a landscaper and they left trash on your lawn for two months. Well, that's what our staff did and, and our managerial staff did nothing about it. And quite frankly, I think there needs to be a reassessment of, uh, of their uh, managerial uh, uh, effectiveness uh, starting tonight. I, I really, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit angry. I, I've always been friendly with Luke and, you know, for him to suddenly uh, behave the way he does is, is really, it's upsetting to me. I, I have nothing more to say, thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Are there any other public comments at this time? Uh, no. That's it, all right. Moving on to district 
matters. Um, park item one, park maintenance facility update on building construction budget and exterior courtyards. Yep, this was requested by Director Kilkenny at the last meeting. So we put together some numbers uh, in relation to the construction and to the contract. You can see it on the uh, on the work or on the staff report that I gave you. So I mean, we're we're right on track with where it is. Um, the change orders that have been approved to date are all very minor, um, and none of them are cause for concern from staff. Um, $11,000 of change orders on a million dollar project at 1% is actually pretty phenomenal uh, for a project of this nature. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. And then we also, or we, I listed the soft costs in there, just kind of showing the other soft costs that have been incurred that are related directly to the construction of the building as well. Um, so as you kind of go through that, you can see where we are. We are on track uh, at the June meeting, you know, the board authorized the district to enter into a financing agreement that was 650,000. Uh, the measure A funding, which was 300 to, uh, 380 to 400,000 is what was anticipated remaining throughout the life of those allocations. Um, and then the remaining costs would be allocated either to the general fund or to our existing board designated reserves fund, which currently has 400,000 in it as well. Uh, we're nearing completion. Uh, we've been begun preparing uh, the RFP for the exterior courtyards that still need to go up. So hopefully we're going to be able to get that out in the coming month or so. Um, and we're going to kind of take the same approach with the adult being the primary Western courtyard that'll be going into the, uh, into the garage area and then a uh, adult for the Eastern courtyard uh, and then some materials. So that way we have options to pick and choose from. Uh, otherwise, if there's any questions, I try to lay it out and keep it simple, and I uh, hope it makes sense, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm just curious, Eric, in the, uh, in the change order, just out of curiosity, w what were the fire alarm modifications? Uh, well, as we were finishing up the permitting, just some of the, the way that the fire alarm had to be configured and routed as opposed to uh, the base model that was kind of included in the original packet. So nothing uh too shocking on there but we just made some had to make some modifications throughout the process thank you for this and i walked by the other day oh, yeah so it's good. really getting good we had our uh, weekly meeting this morning they were blowing the insulation in on the roof uh, so that part's getting done that's the last step and they'll really start closing in all all of the interior the grading should be happening within the next week or so uh, around the building. So I think by this time next month, you're going to see a largely finished uh, building at that point. So it, it's, it's coming along really nice. Um, I have a few questions. I have a really simple one. What's RFP? Request for proposal. Thank you. You got it. Um, I didn't want to have to Google it. Uh, and then my other questions are, um, who approves the change order and is there a minimum maximum whatever amount before it goes to the board uh change orders are reviewed by staff and the project architect we don't have a minimum or maximum threshold on these but they've been so minor that uh, i haven't I just haven't brought them to the board so we can keep this moving forward correct that was just my like thank you that it's only $11,000. It was just yeah. a question of, you know, if it's a major one, um, would it be brought forward? And I'm going to hope so. Um, and then uh, my next question is the soft costs. Do you anticipate, and if so, and you don't have to answer right now, what dollar amount or percentage or ballpark do you foresee for the two side courtyards and any additional costs there? Um, and the soft costs on this, like for preparing that, sure. I mean, we, the nice thing about it is the majority of the plans are, of, for that are done. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll just have to make some minor kind of modifications to them and then spend a little time uh, taking what was a very large RFP and kind of scaling that down. That's kind of, we're using the one for the building as our base template and then bringing that down to uh, meet the smaller needs on this. So yes, there will be some work involved. 
Um, but in terms of, you know, civil or special inspections or testings, no, because this isn't a building or a facility. These are, you know, outdoor exterior, basically uh, some uh, small retaining walls, some grading and some fencing. Okay. Um, do you foresee, and I know you can't answer this, but do you foresee any other change orders coming down? Um, yes, you know, a are couple. Are we still having I issues do. with windows? No, uh, no, there's no issue with the window. We're just waiting for them to show up. I do anticipate a couple other change orders. Um, they, when they hooked up the water to the building, they had to run a pressure test. Pressure is actually running a little over 100 coming into there um, and in talking to the water district, they actually informed that pressure is extremely high. So we're gonna have to put a, a regulator on the building to regulate the water pressure. Uh, 100 is just much too high. It should be somewhere closer to like 60. So we'll put a wow. regu yeah, so we'll put a regulator on the building so that way we can bring that down. And then if there's any uh, pressure adjustments coming down the line in the future ever MWD does some work, we can adjust it at the building so we can keep proper water pressure in there. Um, and then I'm trying to remember, oh, the other one was we had them uh, install some backing boards along the walls before they sealed it with the uh, both the drywall and the hardy board. So that way the uh, we could install shelving units or anything and have solid backing board to put behind it as opposed to searching for a one and three quarter inch stud. Uh, mm -hmm. They put uh, two by 12 down the face of the building at five to six feet height and three to four feet height uh, at select locations. Yeah, it was a very long term consideration move uh, that as we were going through one of the meetings, it just kind of hit us and said, you know, this makes a lot of sense. So we actually brought Luke and the park guys over and said, you know, what do you think? What kind of are you looking? And then we said, I, I said, yeah, we're going to need to put that in because once you close up, you can't do that again. Okay. Great idea. Um, can I request that if there's anything that's going to be over, I don't know, 20 grand or something like that, that you would kind of reach out? I'm just trying to, the reason why I'm saying, I know you guys had a, the prior board had a dollar amount that they kind of projected that this project would be. And I walked into this thinking, I know that there's fees ahead that have already been approved, but my mindset was, you know, 1.2 because we approved the 1 million 80 that I just kind of want to keep on that track and manage it for myself. Yeah. And I think we're well within that, uh, point two and yes i mean my spending authority i believe goes up to twenty five thousand before i would bring it to the board but uh but yeah i mean you know whatever the board wants uh in the essence on some of these things though do require a turnaround uh so it might you know if we get something high up like that which i certainly do not anticipate especially at this late stage that uh that you would uh, we would be calling a special meeting and i'd be asking everybody to get together quickly so that way we don't stall the project Correct. I just, I don't even think we had this conversation. I, I don't do construction, so I didn't think to have this conversation. So that's, I'm just asking now. Yeah, change orders are pretty common uh, in any project. I mean, remodel a bathroom, you're going to get something. So for us at 11,000 uh, net change order, I think we're doing really good. Oh, I do. So I'm done. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for taking the time to put this all together. I appreciate you're, You are welcome. <laughs> all right. Any comments from the public? Uh, sure, if there's no more board questions. Great, okay, one, one second. second. Uh, yes, uh, I appreciate the uh, report and I appreciate uh, Kathleen, uh, uh, Kathleen's questions. Um, I, I, Kathleen, I think you need to consult, I think the uh, board uh, bylaws just changed uh, the ability for the, uh, for Eric and uh, staff members to uh, make uh, financial decisions. I think it was up to 60,000. I, I, I wondered at that, wondered about that at my, at the time it was approved, I think it's really excessive. I don't see how we can um, manage a budget if, uh, if the board doesn't have oversight on some of these very large expenditures. Um, I don't think 
Eric has ever come close to that, uh, but Eric really should be able to pr provide you with a specific amount. Um, I know that uh, uh, all of our staff members have a pretty generous um, spending limit where they can uh, uh, buy stuff on the district's behalf uh, without board approval, and I, I don't think that's right. I think um, that's the board's uh, uh, purview. Um, with regards to the specifics, uh, I, hopefully it's going to uh, all work out. Um, there was, I mean, it's, a, it's better than what we had before as far as reporting. Um, I am concerned because we had such high estimates for the fence that that's where the, uh, we've got a lot of expenses that are uh, coming our way. Um, and also, uh, there was a discussion of keeping those um, storage uh, or, or the uh, storage lockers, it's not storage lockers, uh, the cargo uh, containers uh, on site, which would be a no-no uh, as far as uh, as far as uh, the building code in Marin, and uh, would also. Uh, affect uh, the drainage on the site. So there's some things to look out for here. Um, you know, hopefully it'll go okay. Um, it takes up a whole heck of a lot of space, and I really do want our park back. So, uh, you know, Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, moving forward. Um, item number two, uh, appointment of board liaisons to Fire Commission and Park and Recreation Commission for calendar year 2022. Um, so this is where I appoint board liaisons. Um, I know I certainly enjoyed um, my year as board liaison for Park and Rec. Um, any, anyone who would like to voice an interest in either commission. Uh, I'd be happy to jump on to Park and Rec. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> and how about Fryer? Oh, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Do you want to keep doing it? Okay. I do want to keep doing it. Okay. I was going to say, happy to go back. I miss our Tuesday meetings, Chief White. I think I'm the favorite now. <laughs> I got them donuts. What did you get them now? I'm joking. <laughs> um, Vir virtual donuts. <laughs> no, we did a donut. We did a donut event. And no, I mean Kathleen. To do. <laughs> <laughs> she's never been able to be at an in-person meeting. Yeah, so you have it. He knows my family. No, just All kidding. Right. I, well, yeah, anyway, to right. bring it back. Yeah. So uh, I'll take fire. Uh, Madam President, you have the ability to appoint. So you don't need a vote or anything like that on this. If, right. You know, you have uh, two directors who've obviously expressed interest, uh, one in being reappointed and one in stepping onto the PNR. Um, any mm -hmm. other comment, public comment, and then you can make your appointments without having to call a uh, formal vote. Yeah. Madam I am. Um, I, I watched the YouTube from last year at this time, so <laughs> I would know how it was supposed to go. <laughs> um, okay, so then, um, do I point first or do I have public comment first? Uh, okay. Comments first. Okay, any public comment? Yeah, one second, please. Steve. Yeah, hi. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I, I think it's great that you guys want to serve. Um, I would ask that each one of you who is serving um, to remember that you're serving the entire community and insist, insist that we have uh, videotape records uh, of these meetings. Um, it really is just pitiful that we have to get everything secondhand and Sometimes things, uh, it's, we have incomplete reports and it's just so easy to do, especially with these Zoom meetings. So, um, thank you.
thank you for serving. Continue to serve. Uh, I, I think you guys are good people with good hearts, and I uh, look forward to good reports on what uh, is going on, on on these other commissions. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. All right, from here then, um, I will appoint Director Case as the board liaison to PNR and appoint Director Kilkenny as liaison to FIRE. Thank you both for your service. Um, moving on to item three, uh, district manager report. Sure, thank you. Uh, the big one here to share, uh, and I actually notified you all via email about this when I got the news, um, the district was awarded a significant amount of funding uh, specific towards special districts for COVID relief uh, in the amount of $337,424. And uh, this was all due to a $100 million allocation by the state legislation that was amended into the fiscal year 21-22 budget. It was specific for special districts, uh, largely in recognition that all the other COVID relief funding that did occur was geared towards cities and counties and did not include special districts. So through the California Special Districts Association, of whom we are a member uh, in their lobbying efforts, they were able to get this passed. Um, turnaround was incredibly quick on this. It got announced at the end of September, applications opened up at the beginning of October and closed within three weeks. Uh, the measurement factor was actually kind of uh, interesting in that what they did was they compared pre-COVID total revenue so fiscal year 18, 19 uh, total revenue compared to fiscal year 2021 total revenue. For us, uh, we in fiscal year 18, 19, our total revenue was $469,827 greater than it was in 2021. Um, of that, uh, you know, there's 2000 special districts in the state. I'm sure many of them applied. Uh, we were uh, prorated our award of $337,424, um, which I was incredibly pleased with. I, I did not expect anywhere close to that amount. I can tell you we got the second highest amount in all of Marin County from the special districts that applied, uh, with the only higher being the Sausalito Marin City Sanitary District. Um, the, the other factor in here was also uh, direct COVID related costs of which we did not have a whole lot of those um, throughout the life of this throughout the fire department or the rec department. The big hit was our greatly reduced recreation programs. Um, so that was where we lost a lot of uh, total revenue. Now keep in mind, this is not net revenue. This is total revenue. Uh, there are no formal restrictions as to how this funding can be ex expended. There are no requirements to submit a formal spending plan. There's no deadline by which when this has to be expended, this is the district's money to put towards uh, any avenue the district sees fit. Um, I'm expecting those to hit our account. It's being distributed through the county, uh, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, the other item that just a brief update on this has come up at past meetings and again at the last meeting uh, i've been able to make a little bit of headway in the cell coverage concerns that exist primarily in lucas valley part of marinwood the uh through the uh, county supervisor's office as well as reaching out to the county oes i certainly want to highlight mary sackett who serves as a current aide to County Supervisor Damon Connolly, who's for our region. She was able to put some legwork in on this and actually contact some of the right people at the major carriers, primarily AT&T, uh, who did, she did get response. This has been hiked up to their engineering team. They ex asked, you know, give us four to six weeks to really kind of look at and investigate and would follow up. So as I learn more, I will find out, uh, I'm not holding my breath that anything amazing is going to happen. It's AT&T and Verizon after all, but 
uh, I'm very happy that at least there's some efforts and some awareness being put towards this. Uh, and we did the OES angle as well, simply from a public safety standpoint and emphasizing that so many people are relying on things like Alert Marin and NICTL to receive notification via their cell phones. Um, and in times when power goes out, a lot of these cell phones are reliant on little transponders hooked up to the internet in their home. If they have no internet, their signal diminishes greatly. So that is moving along. Uh, just a couple other little items of note. Um, we're finalizing our audit that'll be ready to be presented uh, to, at the February board meeting. Um, and then on the park and rec side, as you know, we've been working towards uh, the play structure replacement project. We put out a community survey and at this point have over 130 responses to that survey from members of the community, which is actually a really strong response rate for a survey of this nature. Um, so we're sharing that with the, we'll look at that, try to analyze it to some degree, um, and we'll share that with the Park and Rec Commission, and then hopefully be able to uh, finalize and come forward with some more concrete recommendations on this project moving forward. And then we'll have to get out another uh, request for proposals, otherwise known as an RFP, to the other uh, uh, playground builders and we can start to get some bids in based on some more solid and set direction and guidance that we can give them. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, that's the news. A lot of it's good this month. So any questions, I'm happy to field them. I don't necessarily have a question, but um, just with, with the COVID money that we're getting, I think for, especially for the three newest um, board members, um, I, I'd propose that this is a time, and, and Stephen, I hope you took your heart medication, get ready. This is a time that we need to, to start thinking about what is our vision for the future for um, you know, utilizing that kind of money. I mean, there's some obvious things that jump to mind for me, but uh, it would be a, a larger discussion. And since we're starting off a new year and have a new president and everything like that, I would just like to propose that we start thinking about making some real tactical, strategic you know, like we've, we haven't had that conversation yet um, and, uh, and would love to promote that as we move forward. That was very similar to, but I will pre present it in a question. <laughs> Do we have any plans or an idea, Eric, of what we really could utilize those funds for? Um, that don't go to, you know, day-to-day -day maintenance, but, you know, something that, like Chris says, could go towards our goal of a 2020 year. Of the 2020. Like, like, sorry, 2022. Sorry, 2022. Sorry. Is there something, I don't want to go backwards. It's 2020 money in 2022. Um, do you do you have a plan or a thought outside daily maintenance that those funds could go towards? Uh, we haven't really discussed that even internally at a staff level. I mean, for me, our whole goal for the last seven years has been to continue to build up our fund balance so that way we can get into a place where we have a healthy fund balance, a healthy reserve balance, keeping in mind this is a district that uh, – up until four years ago, never really started to stockpile towards any level of reserves. Uh, mm -hmm. I think having reserves are critical. Um, and I think kind of, for me, my attitude is, all, and my approach is always, and recommendations have been less about spend what you have and more about stockpile what you have because lesser years are coming. It's the nature of the economy. It's cyclical. There's going to be years where uh, we're we're not going to be able to have the same kind of uh, net revenue gain. So for me, I'm always looking to continue to have a uh, healthy fund in our general fund, healthy reserves. Um, you know, we, we have, we don't have emergency operating reserves. We just kind of have a board designated reserve. We don't have a capital reserve. I think you still do have a large project also coming up um, just to finish off the maintenance facility, not only with the courtyards, but also with the landscaping that's going to take place in that area to kind of bring that into a, a park-like setting. I think you have uh, some definite concerns, and Luke has been doing his best to address a lot of these in more organic ways, but uh, 
you know, with some of the creek bank erosions, it's uh, uh, $337,000 is a very nice amount of money and it uh, was unforeseen. So that's always welcomed. Um, it's not a lot of money and I don't think it goes very far. And I, I still don't feel that from a overall financial stature that this district is generally where it should be. I mean, we don't have a six month uh, emergency reserve set up that is basically half of our annual budget, which is you know kind of the best practice and what is recommended. Uh, our OPEB trust fund is growing. We have a half a million in that point right now, but you don't have any, you don't have a similar trust started towards a, uh, towards a pension trust fund uh, that can start to pay down your pension UAL. You have large un, unfunded accrued liabilities. I uh, rather than, you know, and again, you have projects that are already committed that we need to fund and make those finish so we can realize that. Um, so no, I, you know, that's kind of a long winded way of answering your question. <laughs> I, I, I have 101 things you could do with it, but for me, I, I would take that money. You know, this isn't a million dollar grant that came out of nowhere. It's 337,000. So I would continue on the same path that we have been continuing on. That would be my recommendation of apply this into your general fund, start thinking about the potential of say a pension trust, start thinking about an emergency operating reserve um, and things along those lines, because that's the, you know, the, the mark of a financially healthy agency. You mean we might go into a pandemic? Well, Just an emergency economy <laughs> happens, you know, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, less than 10 years ago, the housing market dipped dramatically in this district had to make very hard decisions and we're cutting staff and eliminating director positions and so on and so forth there. That is going to happen again at some point. It would be nice if we were in a better financial position to weather it than we were 10 years ago when that occurred. That's my general take. I, I, uh, no, just because I, you I have it doesn't it. mean we, we have to spend it. Correct. I appreciate it. That's why I was asking if you, you know, again, just opening up the lines of communication. So, yep. Uh, I think these are all great points by both you and uh, Director Case. So, I, I think it's smart. That's it. Thank you. Any other comments on the board? No. How about public comment? Sure, one second. Steve. Yes, uh, to Chris and everyone else, uh, I, I, I don't have a heart attack uh, when, when you say that you have ideas. I know each one of you has ideas, and uh, I'd love to hear them, and I think um, that's the most important thing that you can provide our community is a vision and leadership. Um, and I appreciate um, what Eric said. You know, just because we have this money doesn't mean we – need to spend it. Uh, there are some prudent things we can do to improve our financial um, uh, position. Um, let us not forget that we unfortunately are building the most expensive maintenance facility in Marin County history. Um, it's a very expensive and we could and not only was it expensive uh, the first time then we we we, we uh, expanded um, our uh, ability to get what six hundred or seven hundred thousand dollars more for extra stuff um, I'm sh I know we can find ways to spend this but let, let's make sure that um, we spend it in wise places and I think uh, once again I I hate to be Johnny one note but we need to to improve our accessibility in the park, we need a ramp, uh, or not a not a fancy ramp, just a small ramp uh, for access to our park on Quietwood Drive. We also need um, uh, some accessible bathrooms near the tennis courts. We don't have enough stalls available for the amount of pu uh, public use we have in our park, and those are just two small areas. And of course, um, I would like to see us uh, do bigger and bolder things in our open space. I think that's the one great untapped resource that we have that that we can, you know, set set a ten year plan and build something really remarkable. Um, so spend it well. Thanks. Oh, the other thing too, 
Mary Sackett is fa fantastic. I'm glad she's helping you out. She's she's uh, bright as a penny, and she's helped us so much with the uh, uh, cleaning up uh, Marinwood Plaza. Um, she's and I think she's running for uh, Damon's uh, uh, position, and hopefully, uh, you know, because it's election election year, you can put a little heat and maybe she'll put a little heat to get to get us better cell phone coverage this year so good work Eric thank you thank you Stephen all right moving on to fire department matters item one chief officer report and activity summary so we had chief Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you and Happy New Year. Um, don't have a very deep report for you, but I got a few uh, items I'd like to cover briefly, starting um, with the um, Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Uh, today, as a matter of fact, uh, I sat in um, as part of the selection committee on the request for proposal, RFP, um, that uh, was entertained for um, in, ingress, or excuse me, access and egress, or ingress and egress purposes uh, when it comes to our evacuation study. And so, real interesting conversation, uh, three and a half hour meeting that uh, is going to be further discussion on probably sometime uh, late next week so that we can give all of our feedback back to Ann Crelock, who heads up the MWPA, and then she can circle back excuse me, she doesn't head up the MWPA, she's heading up this portion of the MWPA. That'll be uh, Director Brown. Um, but she can circle back with the, the vendor and share our conversation, our comments, our um, input that we like to see on the value of the evacuation study as it's proposed. And so given that, there's gonna be a lot more to follow. The MWPA has placed a pretty aggressive timeline of one year to have some results. Um, uh, I think the vendor, was looking more like a two-year um, timeline may have made sense for them to develop this study and, and all of the related activities. But the depth and the breadth of it uh, kind of indicates that this is something that could either take place on a phased approach or a launch with a base model and then build on that base model. So one way or another, I think it's still gonna land on one year, um, but it's just a question of what model is gonna be chosen as the ideal approach to, to really get some traction on this. So a lot more to follow on this in the, in the days ahead, a lot of technology and data and research and literature that's gonna go and factor into that study. So looking forward to seeing this. I, from what I understand, there's nothing else being done like this within the state. And so we may be able to see uh, the MWPA create some real innovation in Marin County for other agencies and communities to model uh, just in a short period of time in the next year or two. So um, given that, I'm also moving into the ops chairperson role this year. I'll be um, spelling uh, Chief Bill Tyler from Novato, who's had this responsibility since the inception of the MWPA. And I've got some big shoes to fill, so I'm hoping to, to have some lunch with Bill and talk about some of the deliverables and some of the things he's been involved in over the course of the last 20 months, well, about 18 months or so and what his thoughts are um, on how best I can be effective in that role moving forward. So uh, it will mean I'll have a lot more to share on MWPA related items, uh, most definitely in my report and um, at any point for that matter. So be looking for more of that as we move forward in the year. Um, I have a, a photo of a North Lucas Valley Fuels Project a before and after. I didn't get a specific location for this, but I, I was impressed by the work and how you can see a distinct difference uh, in that area from the before photo on the left to the after photo on the right with trims being limbed up, surface and ground fuels being uh, removed, uh, cut nearly down the soil. I'm assuming that the rains helped produce some of that greenery that we see on the, the photo on the after. But um, that being said, this is the kind of work that's being replicated wherever you look in the Marinwood, San Rafael, Marin County area in general. So uh, I'm really excited to see this. I'm hopeful that we're gonna see a lot more of this and this is gonna become the norm, not the exception over the course of the next couple of years as we really 
start dialing in vegetation and fuel reduction um, through the use of the MWPA funding and the, the expertise of some of the staff that are working on these projects. COVID, uh, I'm gonna just briefly touch on this. I know this is something that's you know, really getting a lot of attention um, for any number of reasons, but uh, in short, uh, there's been new guidance released even over the weekend regarding how um, employees are to be addressed uh, and under what circumstances if say emergency first responders start to reach a critical staffing point that we can compel people to return back to work despite testing positive or despite only being out for perhaps as little as five days. So this is obviously creating some, some concern at the rank and file level, but it's also creating some concern with the, the fire chief officers. And we met earlier today to discuss some of our concerns and there's gonna be a little more dialogue about this and we're gonna push um, the, the collective questions that we have and the, maybe the suggestions that we have back to the county to see if we can make some modifications to the language that was supposed to be implemented effective um, January 28th. So in, that, in short, members that are unvaccinated and members that are vaccinated but have not received their booster will be in the same classification. Um, and if it's if you're eligible to receive the booster and if you're not, not taking the booster, you'll be in the same classification as unvaccinated individuals. Right now, um, well, I'll say this, since January 3rd, we've had eight individuals in the San Rafael Fire Department test positive for COVID. We've had probably 25 or more people be considered direct exposures through close contact. And so gradually out of those 25, we started with two individuals, we moved up to eight. So out of those 25, we're seeing a uh, roughly 33% increase in the number of individuals who are once considered close contacts now becoming testing positive and some with symptoms. And so given that, there was also a conversation about staffing, whether or not what will be considered to be a tipping or crisis point uh, where we'd make some significant adjustments to how we staff um, and so that was another conversation that occurred today because some of the agencies, uh, including Novato, are facing significant staffing issues right now. They're down 33% of their staff due to COVID infection. And so we're not quite there. I'm hoping that we're going to be staggering the situation in San Rafael. And fortunately, in Marinwood, we've been weathering the storm very well. So um, let's keep our fingers crossed on this as we move forward. But that being said, um, I'm sure there'll be some more changes to come. And then last but not least, something I learned last night, I just wanted to share. For those that have health insurance, the federal government is now compelling and incentivizing the health insurance providers to provide up to eight antigen tests, rapid tests per month to each individual. So with that, and it's at no charge. And so with that, um, everyone will be entitled to have up to eight tests uh, provided to them. You can probably purchase them through, or excuse me, obtain them through CVS, Walgreens, uh, Kaiser, et cetera, et cetera. So free test on the horizon. The question is how long will it take to get those tests distributed to those uh, locations? But be looking for that. So for those of us who've been spending out of our own pockets up to the tune of a hundred or two or three or several hundred dollars over the course of the last few months, that can be a little bit of relief that you don't have to come out of pocket anymore. Um, Santa Detail 2021, had a great, beautiful day. Um, had a chance to get out right before the weather turned really uh, um, discouraging for any kind of outdoor activity. So um, we got out on Saturday, December 11th. We had Marinwood Fire Department personnel, District Manor Dreykazen and uh, myself, um, our fire commissioners, um, Greg Stilson and John Surratt uh, ran across Director uh, Kilkenny, she was out there that day, and um, it was just a beautiful time. It was my first event. Last year, we didn't have the event because of the pandemic, so this time I had a chance to see how this operates. I'm looking forward somewhere down the road to seeing and experience our pancake breakfast, and I'm hopeful that uh, Omicron or some other variant doesn't surface around in and create any complications with our ability to do that. Um, but that being said, it was a real, it was a nice day. I was able to bring my son, my 10 year old. I think he enjoyed just getting out and being part of the, the activities and having a chance to uh, experience Marinwood and some of the other um, 
personnel at the fire station. We were at, um, there at 58 for a little while. And so um, hopeful that, again, this time next year, we'll be able to do the full thing without the weather, you know, impacting one of our days um, the way it did this year. Christmas. We've got until this Friday, if you have a tree that's drying out, to actually take and dispose of that tree and recycle it for free. And you can do so at the north end of the Marinwood Community Center parking lot, right adjacent to the sandbag area. So we really encourage everyone to jump on it, take advantage of this opportunity over the next three days and, and take your tree. I've got an artificial tree and I gotta be honest, um, it's been slow moving here. I asked the girls, my daughters to remove the uh, bulbs. They did about two thirds of them and left the other third up there for some reason. So I've still got to go and get some work done or ride them to get it done. But um, sounds about right. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> sounds I said about it right. sounds about right with child labor. <laughs> yeah, well, they're 17 and 18. They, they could have knocked this right out, but they just gave me the, the nonchalant, lackadaisical, you know, a dad will finish it off program, I guess. I don't know. So, um, so anyway, with that, um, please uh, pass the word along. If you know of anybody that still has their tree just through conversation or whatever, just let them know, hey, you got till Friday to go ahead and recycle it. Does our garbage not pick them up? You know, I, that's a good question. Um, do you I, don't, I, would, I would assume that they do, but I they can't do make that assumption. They do if you leave, leave them right out. Way. Yes, they okay. do. If you, if you leave it out on your garbage day up to the same date, or if you don't want to wait to your garbage day, um, you know, not only our site, there's a lot of sites throughout Marin where you can bring it and set it there. And uh, they come by two or three times a week to collect uh, what wind up being fairly large piles of trees in our parking lots from time to time. What about Hanukkah bushes? Is it specific? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I only have a, a fake Hanukkah bush, so... I don't have to put it out on the curb. Like, no. Yeah. I don't think there's any discrimination on what kind of tree <laughs> gets I'm recycled. Just, I had to no, throw no. it in there. I'm sorry. You, you can't take a flock tree. That's the only one that they would they say that True. they don't want to accept is the flock tree. Way to bring it back. All denominations Keith. accepted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um David Catalanotto, who has uh, been the, the individual who's been instrumental in providing my monthly statistics every month, among many other roles he's filled during the past five years working uh, for the San Rafael Fire Department and Maroonwood Fire Departments indirectly, has uh, announced his departure. He um, has uh, been um, offered a position as senior management analyst in Petaluma Fire Department. So he's going to take that experience that he's gained working on numerous things here in, in um, San Rafael Marinwood and use that experience to, uh, to his benefit and to the Petaluma Fire Department's benefit effective January 24th. So his last day will be Friday the 21st. Uh, we are gonna miss David. He's really been very helpful and has assumed a lot of responsibilities in addition to being the household hazardous waste coordinator. And so, um, you know, just uh, I'm glad for him in so many ways because, you know, this is an opportunity for him to, to pursue something. He really had a strong interest um, whether it's uh, analyst type work and um, other activities. Uh, and he's going back to school at the same time. So he's got, and a newborn. So uh, David's got a lot going on in 2022. And uh, we really uh, are excited for him. So that being said, uh, I'll certainly pass along the, the um, Marinwood congratulations to him. So. Yes, congratulations and thank you for all the help over the years, especially with the statistics, even with some crazy questions that we've sent him <laughs> over the years, maybe yeah. the same question over and over, but we appreciate his humor and dedication to providing us the statistics. You know, and, and here's the thing. If you look at this month's stats, our numbers are finally different. I've never seen numbers that were six minutes plus. And so I thought to myself, okay, David either did the job right finally on the last submission or something's changed. And so I have to, I have to go with something's changed. I, I know David's been doing the job correctly all along, but I think what's changed that increased our response time by anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds is it's going to be my assumption that this has been weather related. And so given the heavy rains that we had experienced and the consistent 
wet roads and what have you, I think our personnel have wisely slowed their rate of travel just to ensure that they're, they're being safe on the road. But this six minutes and 14 seconds is still an excellent uh, total response time. So I have no qualms about that whatsoever. But I know I've been joking for some time about, you know, the seeing the numbers that looked almost identical every month for, for the longest, as long as I've been here. But, um, that being said, Thomas Wong, who's our senior management analyst that's going to take over the responsibility for um, David Catalanotto, he's going to provide stats uh, effective next report. So we'll see what his numbers look like. I'm really curious to see how that turns out. But that concludes my report. If there are any questions, I'm more than happy to, to answer what I can. What is JPA for again? Joint Powers Authority. Oh, thank you. And now we're going to use it five different times during the rest of the meeting to make sure we drill it in, just like we did the RFP. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yep. Hey, and then I'll ask in six months. I was just curious. I noticed that we had three hazmat responses in Rinwood this past month. Is there like, are the, were those just little guy like... Is that like somebody's car battery dripped or do we have anything that we need to be thinking about? No, I, I would assume that there's nothing that we have to really give a lot of pause or concern to. Um, I don't know the specifics on the, the hazardous materials responses, the three, but oftentimes they're simple as, you know, paint that's been left on the side of the road as an example, or maybe some oil that's spilled um, or even, oil that's been left on the side of the road or in some location that it shouldn't be. But um, every now and then there's an unknown substance where somebody will phone it in because it's an unusual color and maybe it's, you know, um, going down the side of the road and somebody, you know, looks at a, a fluorescent green substance in a waterway or something like that. And that's where you really want to start to be concerned. But um, I wasn't advised of any major incident or anything of uh, that should be a, a tension or um, provide any level of real interest and or concern. So if I do hear of anything, I'll, I'll circle back. In fact, I can check with David before he leaves just to find out what did we actually have. Um, you know, it could be fluorescent light bulbs that were, you know, discarded or something else. It, it's any number of things that they consider to be hazardous. So you got corrosives, you got, you know, uh, electrical, you got just a variety of things. And so it could be almost anything. He didn't give me any specifics on those three, but I'll find out. Oops. Great. Thank you so much. And a service call, is that just like lighting a pilot light? Um, that can range from something as simple as that to, you know, you had a um, uh, CO detector or something that may have activated. It could be um, oh, okay. someone who needs some sort of medical assistance or just uh, a citizen assist, as we call it, or um, a a lift assist, someone who's, you know, maybe got some ambulatory challenges that couldn't reach something. I mean, it, you, it could be a variety of things for a service call. Somebody who's fallen who can't get up? Uh, that could be just a service call. Most often, though, that might be a medical, that might be an EMS call, EMS call depending on if the person injured themselves when they fell. Yeah. So does that include like the nursing homes that we had previously talked about having you guys when they were so sh short with personnel had you guys coming in to help put people back in bed and in wheelchairs if they couldn't do that? Is that considered? That is more along the lines of a service call or a medical assist. Okay. Absolutely. Um, again, it's not something that you would really, uh, okay, let's go with the old cat in a tree. <laughs> that's one, right? That's a, that's an example of something <laughs> that is a service call. Nice. Um, but the true medical assist would be something along the lines where the question was, um, you know, someone fell and, and doesn't have a true medical emergency, but needs some assistance of some sort, just, you know, picking up something or resetting something or even helping them back into their wheelchair, as an example, or um, any number of, you know, subtle, small things that aren't really true emergencies. But important nonetheless, because they're, they're helpful. Yeah. Well, thank you for your report. And again, Absolutely done for coming to partake in our Santa day. Oh yeah, we'll do. <laughs> we'll do. It's always fun. Thanks, Chief. Um, oh, I have any 
any other any any questions from the public or comments? Yes, one second. Yes, uh, thanks, Chief. Uh, appreciate the report. Particularly, I, I, I like those pictures of the, uh, the fuels project. That really helps me understand what's going on out there. Um, uh, and so, thank you very much for that. Um, I do have a couple questions. First of all, you know, you've been reporting on uh, the COVID nineteen res response, and I. I'm a, just a little, and I appreciate what you do, uh, your reporting on it, but but I'm a little confused. Um, I, are you in some, I, I assume you are reporting what the, the, the stuff that you've heard from uh, Dr. Matt Willis. Is that correct? I mean, you're, you're, you're not in, in any way, shape or form uh, direct in the line of responsibility as far as managing res um, the public safety response or the health response. Is that correct? Um, I can say that as fire chief, we're directly responsible in each agency for ensuring that our personnel um, are operating safely and in accord with California Department of Public Health guidelines, CDC guidelines, and okay. county health and county EMS guidelines. And so to that point, we have to remain abreast of what's taking place because there's there's been a shift and an ongoing shift and how members who are unvaccinated, as an example, are treated in the workplace. And so we're- we're For, for your own agency. I, I'm sorry to- for, Yes, off, yes. Like that. Okay, I just, I just wanted a, a little bit of clarity on that. Um, uh, okay, and the other thing too, um, you know, we did have that major uh, wildfire area, and I also appreciate knowing that uh you know we're emphasizing uh evacuation and that sort of thing um i hope i've requested this in the past i hope that your department or some department in in uh whether it's a wild uh, fire agency or whatever um has some sort of public forum um that uh, you know bringing people together to discuss specifically you know uh the appropriate res emergency response and and you know just to inform the public a little bit more we really should take advantage of the big event that we had to educate the public and uh, improve safety i i don't know how dangerous our valley is i know we don't have a lot of vegetation on uh half of it um which is good because uh, i don't think we'll be swept over like uh it happened up in santa rosa but you know maybe there's still some concerns um and we want to know what those concerns are and and really understand the amount of dangers that we face as a community um i can share that um there's a lot of information being provided to members, um, whether it be on the Marin uh, Wildfire Prevention Authority's website, whether it be on Fire Safe Marin's website, whether it be on some of the FireWise community uh, and neighborhood association content that's out there. But in, in summary, I think the, the most impressive things that we can do right now are addressing what happens around our own immediate vicinity, our own properties, the house outward approach is what we've been communicating consistently throughout the county right now, so that everyone is taking care of their property outwards to 100 feet and beyond if you have more than 100 feet extending to your neighbors or to an adjacent open space area or something else. And so that would be the first thing I would really emphasize that we need to continue to work on so that if something does occur, let's say a fast moving fire happens somewhere, everyone is not gonna have to necessarily evacuate because they've got protective measures already in place around their properties. And a prime example that you could see where this was effective was the, the fire that occurred in Santa Rosa uh, last year, where you saw the before and after, um, excuse me, the year before last, where you saw the incident where there were photos of areas that had been cleared of vegetation very effectively and that there were areas that were not. And those areas that were not actually 
were impacted by the fire. And so, and I'm referring to specifically residential private homes. And so that is a prime example of why we're really pushing hard for the house outward approach. But collectively as a county, as you know, there are a lot of fuels, there's a lot of effort underway to see and prioritize um, areas where they believe the, the biggest threat or the highest priority focus needs to be. And I think we've been doing a pretty, pretty good job of doing that. And so specifically for Marinwood, our staff will continue to get out and identify projects that we think will continue to reduce the risk. But first and foremost, I just have to encourage you to follow the house outward approach and you know, make yourself familiar with some of those various websites and the content that's on there so you can understand the, the, um, the greater lift that's taking place right now. Chief, on that, I just want to follow up and say that I, I've certainly noticed an, another handful of uh, properties with large scale juniper removals. And I, and I know that the AmeriCorps teams have helped with that and that uh, the funding through that, I believe, has come through the uh, MWPA core funding, which has been great. So that doesn't actually affect a lot of our local funding, too. But mm -hmm. just the, the work and the coordination, and everything's really looking good. And we have receive a lot of good comments on that. So thank you for, again for all their leadership, too. Absolutely, I'll, I'll share that. And uh, another thing is, uh, I actually walked the trail that they did the vegetation management on that you have photos of earlier in your report. Um, it was, I've walked that trail a number of times. It was really impressive. Um, you could even see, as I walked all the way out west um, and beyond our community, you could definitely see the difference for where there had been time put in to, to remove that vegetation and limb those trees versus spots further out that weren't, it was, it was really nice. Right. Right. No, that's great to hear. And then again, the, the goal is to continue to build on that, that progress. So, you know, as more funding comes available every year, we'll continue to do the work. And at some point, the goal is just to maintain, not to, con you know, not to try to seek out new projects, but to just maintain the work that we've already, you know, completed. And so that's, that's the huge lift that we're, you know, in the process of making right now. Well, again, thank you, Chief White, um, for your report um, and all the other information that you shared with us tonight. Um, moving on to park and recreation matters. Mr. Fretwell. Thanks, Lisa. Um, hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to be with you. Uh, we'll start uh, just giving a little bit of a recap on some of the things that have been going on in the recreation department this past month or since we last met. Um, oh, and uh, Bill, I was able to look it up, but um, yeah, we purchased six uh, canopies. That's what that was in the calendar cool thank you um, yeah where we did we those. purchase those from that's a really good price <laughs> uh, amazon um they uh we use those for summer camps we use them for um the pool we use those for a lot of our special events and um they're yeah so those are kind of an odd that particular purchase uh was when we put on our our all outdoor um halloween harvest fest um usually which is an indoor event we did purchase a few more of those to to beef up our supply to be able to um have everything be outdoors and all of our booths be sort of protected a little bit so anyway um so uh right after we last met um we did have our uh our annual winter event uh holiday event here at the community center um, this year was our first time doing a winter outdoor concert, which we called the Jingle Bell Jazz. Um, most years that event would have been um, our indoor winter fest, kind of open house games and, and activities and arts and crafts for the kids. Um, this year with, with uh, the COVID situation, uh, we did not want to um, try to have a bunch of people in a, in a room together and, um, and try to provide a, a COVID friendly uh, event we could still put on. Thankfully, the weather cooperated and we were able to uh, follow through with our with our outdoor concert. Um, again, it was our first time doing something like this um, at this time of the year, and um, it ended up being a, a really wonderful event. Um, there was a couple comments about uh, the band earlier in the meeting, and um, just you know that that's a band that's, that has provided the musical accompaniment to this Winterfest concert several 
years before. Um, and it is a, a group of local um, musicians, some of whom are dads uh, from the neighborhood. And um, they're, they're actually world-class jazz musicians and we're, we're getting them for a steal. Um, they're doing a huge favor uh, coming in and they, this is one of their um, kind of special holiday events that they love to do. And, and um, we're really fortunate to, to be able to have them. So this year I was, I was really excited to be able to feature the band as opposed to have them be kind of in the background um, inside the event. And uh, they were delivered and it was a, a wonderful um, uh, concert. And uh, even so it was freezing cold. Uh, we had the heat lamps out, we had the fire pit out uh, and everyone uh, thankfully dressed warm and, and we had a, a really, really amazing turnout for that. And so we're, we were really excited um, that this, you know, people braved the, the cold and, and the weather and, and a kind of a new thing. And they came out. We also had, um, we kept the, the pictures with Santa and um, we had a wonderful Santa Claus this year and, and that went really well as well. So I was very proud of staff. Um, they pulled this together uh, without really a template and made the, the community center and the park look amazing. There are so many lights we had to utilize um, practically every outlet in the facility to, to make that happen. And um, it, went, it went really well and it was, it was a wonderful event. So we'll definitely keep that on our radar for, for the future uh, to mix things up. Um, it is a very weather dependent event. So we'll, we'll have to always pay attention to that. But um, um, so that went, that went great. And we're really excited about that. Um, the uh, other things that went on uh, since we last met in, in, the, in December, we did have our, our letters to Santa um, program that, that we just started last year um, as sort of a stand in since we could do much during the lockdown. And we decided to continue it this year and we had more than double the letters uh, to Santa and that's just a fun um, thing to be able to do in the community. We had about 85 uh, kids write letters to Santa and they, um, they all made it and, and got responses. And a big thanks to Carolyn for, for helping facilitate that. Um, uh, we ran our, our normal winter break camp uh, for the two weeks the kids were off of school the last two weeks of the, of the year. Um, that's always a really popular camp. Um, it's, it's a special thing that we're able to do. It's our th one of three camps we do each year. We do a, a, um, obviously our big summer camp program. We do a spring break and uh, actually we do, I guess we do four, a winter break and a midwinter break. And um, we're really fortunate that we have so many great staff during the summer that um, when they're back on their breaks, uh, we are able to, to employ them for, for the winter break camp and um, really put on sort of a, a small version of our summer camp um, during those weeks. And so um, they're getting a lot of, of really high quality uh, arts and crafts and activities and, and really good staff that, that are able to kind of step in and, and do that. And Robin is very savvy during, during those weeks and she, um, always takes the opportunity to, to make sure she's touching base with people about this upcoming season, she conducts interviews while people are, are home on break, and also tries out some people in a little bit of a higher position during this winter break camp when we have um, smaller groups and a lot of oversight to kind of see if, uh, if some of the staff have what it, what it takes to step up and, and take on more of the director and supervisor roles. So um, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to kind of prep for summer in, um, in addition to providing a, a great child care program. So that was a great program. The weather gave us a, at least a handful of days outside and, and, and we're really happy about that. Uh, upcoming, our next, big, uh, our next big event is going to be our um, Raise a Glass Winter Wine Tasting. It's a little later this year. It's on um, the first Saturday in March uh, from two to five. And uh, we, we skipped it last year, uh, but, um, but this will be our 11th annual Raise a Glass Winter Wine Tasting. It's a, it's a fantastic event. It's a little different from our other, um, our other events. We get a lot of great wineries, mostly from Sonoma, some from Napa, and some from uh, a couple other places. Um, we'll have around uh, 12 to 15 wineries. Um, pouring wine and a lot of times the winemakers will come out and uh, they, they'll chat it up and it's a great time to get to know about the winemaking process and people sign up for wine clubs and we have a lot of wine lovers in town and this is a great time for them to connect with uh, some of the local wineries uh, just up, up the road. Um, we do have live music uh, at, at this event. We have um, some uh, refreshments and food and um, it's just a really, a really nice time. So we're excited to be resuming that and uh, we're looking forward to that. Hope you're all able to make it uh, for that. Again, it's March 5th, uh, two to five, uh, coming up, raise a glass. And um, uh, beyond that, we have our spring art show um, coming up in April. And then um, we'll have more events to, to announce in the coming weeks and months. Uh, the staff is hard at work uh, getting the final touches on our Marinwood review, our spring summer catalog, which will list Everything we're offering for the spring and summer, we've got a, um, it's, a, it's a big return to normal. 
Um, not everything will be exactly what it was before the pandemic, but we're getting as close as we can. Um, we're really excited for, for what's in store for the coming, um, the coming season. So keep an eye out for that. It should be out in the next few weeks. We'll have it online first, and then it'll come out in print and be delivered to everyone's doorstep uh, or mailbox, I guess, um, shortly after that. And we'll be opening up registration for most of our summer programs um, in uh, the second week of March. So we'll have all that, all that, most of that's on the website already, but um, we'll be announcing more details in the coming months. Switching over to uh, parks maintenance, um, the, the big project this last month, which um, was a little bit unprecedented for, for us, but we, we went all in on the creek and um, a mixture of, of this last really, really bad drought and then now the heavy rains and the really, really wet winter we've had has um, really accelerated some of the erosion we've been witnessing in the creek over the years. And this, uh, there's some couple spots that have, um, have been problematic and, and gotten a lot worse. And so um, trying to take a proactive approach and, and see what can we do to mitigate this and what can we do to preserve um, our, our park and, and community center property that it's getting closer and closer to the creek as it, as it erodes. Uh, we've brought out um, some professionals to, to give us some guidance and direction. And um, I've uh, had staff out in the creek several days, uh, a, many days a week uh, this, this past month, doing um, a lot of uh, strategic plantings uh, along the creek bank. And uh, mostly willow shoots, uh, stakes, and um, uh, other... Um, mostly willow tree uh, branches and willows are really unique in that they they have um, special buds on them that will uh, sprout roots if planted um, and some other trees do that too but willows are, are specifically um, geared towards being able to grow new trees from cutting branches and so staff cut a lot of uh, willow branches from from around the creek and um, we've been out there planting we planted over a hundred uh, new trees or um, future trees I guess you could call them um, in this past few weeks. And December is the month when, when willows work on their roots and it's the time to, to try to get as many plantings done. You can still plant beyond that and we will continue the effort, but um, we tried to get as much done in December, which is I guess the magic month for that um, in, a, in a few areas along the creek that, that we wanna try to really protect. Um, there's a number of other, of other plantings and other measures that, that we'll be taking as well. Um, throughout the spring and, and, and on through the year and, and continuing. But um, this was our big attempt to try to shore up some of the areas we, we, we've been a little bit concerned about. Um, and I really uh, just want to thank uh, Marco and Estevan. And I've even recruited John Paul from, from the rec side to help us out there. Um, getting out in the rain, in the cold, um, getting up to, you know, up to about here in the hip waders and some of the spots in the creek and, um, and trying to get as much of that done while, while we could. Um, and not waiting for a, a nice weather day, but just getting out there rain or shine. And um, so they, they did an amazing effort and we came back muddy and cold and soaked to the bone, but um, we've got a lot of work done. So I'll be updating uh, the board as, as we watch. Um, we're not sure how well it's gonna go. A lot of conditions, a lot of uh, things play into how, how well these plants will take root. Um, we're, under the best conditions, you can expect around 70 to 80% uh, to, to take off and, and survive. Um, so we'll see what happens and we'll continue that and make that, um, you know, a, a regular practice. So that's taken up a lot of staff time and um, we definitely put all of our focus on that and, um, and uh, I mean, we're playing a little bit of catch up now. Um, and so we're, we're getting back on track, but um, that's been a, a big part of our month. Um, plenty of other projects coming up in the, uh, um, in the next weeks and months with the staff. Um, They've done a lot of uh, maintenance and checking on, on the drains, the roof, the downspouts, um, everything weather related. It's been a big rain season and um, it's, it's taken a toll on, on all of our infrastructure and just making sure everything is flowing well. And currently everything is, is doing great um, in terms of the drains, the culverts and the V ditches are all, all uh, clear and flowing, um, but that takes a lot of uh, constant checking and maintenance and effort. Um, upcoming projects that I'll be talking about, um, there will be uh, a lot of work done at the pool, getting ready for the 2022 pool season, which will be opening up uh, for the swim team in March and to the general public in April. So there'll be a lot of just checking all the equipment, uh, making some small repairs, getting everything up in working order and doing some painting and some other things to, to get the place looking its best for, um, for opening. Um, and we also have 
some nice having all the water, uh, but once once the rain stops, we'll have um, to get things irrigated again. And there are a few uh, irrigation repairs and some redesigns we're going to be doing at the, at the park for that. So staff's working on plans for that and um, uh, amongst other things. So uh, I'll stop there, but please do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Luke. Any questions or comments from the board? I have a I have a question. Only more work to Chris. Um, is the park and rec part of the conversations when you met with Marine Marin Resource Conservation, or did you guys meet them on their own? And is that something that Park and Rec kind of involve in the long term project, or not? Um, no, the as far as I mean, the commission that you're referring to, the mm -hmm. Park and Commission. Um, no, we uh, Eric and I met with. Um, uh, Sarah Phillips from from that organization, and I met with um, uh, John Pardoni and a couple other people from the Straw Program before. Um, and those were just they came out and walked the creek with us and gave us um, uh, and then sent us a bunch of resources and, and guidance on, on what to do. Um, and that's one of those things that um, definitely we'll be updating and, and talking about at the commission level uh, for sure. And, and given in having that discussion, but um, uh, this was one of those things that. I knew it was very time sensitive for the weather that we're having and, and the window to, to building some things. So we were trying to just make a jump on this and get um, just get some direction so we can move forward. But we'll definitely be part of that discussion moving forward as well. Thank you. And please send our thanks to the guys for wading through the creek and the cold water to get this done. We really appreciate it. I definitely will. Definitely pass them. I, I second that. I was going to mention that too because I been in the creek with the girls for like moments and I was just like not for me so I really appreciate it absolutely and Eric don't worry I marked my calendar for March 5th oh I wasn't worried <laughs> <laughs> is there um I don't know if we have any progress on the trail that we've been kind of talking about the one um the 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 one that's supposed to be built by the land developer the, I'll let, uh, yeah, speak to that. Um, I think, yeah, we, we literally just got a draft of his initial report last night. I haven't really had a chance to go through it. I know um, Commissioner John Campo, who also works as a, uh, a senior resource planner for open space, was involved in kind of working with the vendor on that. Uh, we're going to sit down with him and it'll come up at the PNR meeting, Chris. Yeah. Uh, and then I also want to follow up on Luke. I really appreciate and admire how he uh, highlights and calls out um, the park staff as well as John Paul for what is very uncomfortable cold work. But uh, Luke needs to get called out as well. He has spent as much, if not more time than anybody else in the water planting shoots. I mean, I'm going home at night and I see him out there doing things and I'm like, okay, Luke, uh, it's cold. Please come in, warm up. But he's out there tirelessly in the water and, and getting all of that work done. So uh, kudos to Luke as well. He's uh, leading by example in that and certainly not just delegating uncomfortable jobs off. He is, he is in there as much, if not more, than anybody. So thank you, Luke. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that, Eric. Thank you. And thank Robin and everyone else, too, for all they do, not just the guys. <laughs> Absolutely. My, uh, my kids loved winter camp, by the way. So another plug for that, another successful uh, camp season from our perspective. Oh, so thank you for that. No, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Um, yeah. Any, uh, any comments from the public? Uh, yeah, one second. Steven. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks Luke for the report um, and uh, you know just sounds like things are going well I do want to make a few comments though um, you know the types of events that we have I would classify in basically two categories one you know something for the kids some holiday event for the kids and the other is something for the adults kind of a uh, where they can drink uh, and uh, listen to music and I just think you know with two we're missing out on 
things. Um, I really don't approve of the amount of drinking events that we have uh, in, in our community center. It's kind of way too much and adding the, you know, uh, the get togethers uh, uh, in the park w that feature a lot of alcohol. We have a ton of alcohol consumption in our park and it's not really what the park is for. Um, I would ask that you um, think of different events, I guess what I would call maybe more wholesome events where they could be family oriented that are not do not revolve around uh, drinking. Uh, it could be like a tennis tournament or a, you know family Olympics or uh, you know, things that would involve the family. Um, of course, uh, there's really very little uh, outreach to our senior community, um, and I'd like to see a little bit more of that. We do have seniors in our uh, community, and um, it doesn't seem to be much acknowledgement um, of that fact, but uh, they like doing stuff like playing pickleball, which has been ignored uh, by uh, the uh, uh, the rec department. Um, and um, I just think that while I, I like what our rec department does, I think uh, they need to broaden it and uh, de-emphasize the drinking. I know it brings money in, but you know there's more to life than just drinking and, and making money. Um, with regards to the uh, creek maintenance, that sort of thing, that's great. I'm glad we're doing that. Um, the trails still need work. I, I have seen very little work on the trails on the dog leg area that could be tidied up and made much nicer. Um, and I, I just don't see much vision um, as far as our open space goes. Thank you, Stephen. Any other comments or questions from the public? No. no. All right. Moving on to board member items of interest, requests for future agenda items. We have any of those? Just an update on the RFP process for the rest of the space, outdoor space for the maintenance facility and um, any updates with regards to summer plans and stuff with COVID regulations and pool and how the community is going to be able to use the pool and various things this year. Very good. Well, then do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. You need, you need to take a public comment on this first, Lisa, unfortunately. Oh, I do. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Excuse and me. then uh, just really quickly, a couple of things I wanted to add because um, I told them I would. This really doesn't have anything to do with our jurisdiction, but it has a little bit to do with our neighborhood. Um, the county and the housing element uh, feature is they are working on uh, for the housing element for unincorporated Marin County. They are having a couple of presentations coming up one, all via Zoom. One's going to be on January 20th. This is a countywide uh, and another one on February 10th. Um, that's going to really be focused on Lucas Valley Marinwood. Uh, again, this district does not have any jurisdiction and certainly not uh, can issue a formal opinion on housing element. Um, but uh, I told them I would help share the word. So we'll share out uh, via our social media on uh, with some materials that the county has produced and make it very clear that we're sharing this on uh, behalf of the county. And what is the, the sandwich board that's in front? I am not able to actually walk back there because I drive by it. Um, there's a sandwich board about a meeting, a North Gate. Yeah, I saw that too. There was one on both sides. I actually, the, today was the only day I saw it. I'm assuming that's about the development of the North Gate Center. So that's a center fell issue. Okay, but it's January 11th and we have no jurisdiction and it's over Zoom. 
well, that would be today. And yeah. uh, it's probably over by now. Yeah. So yeah, we have no, and even on the housing element that's outside of our subject matter, I'm just sharing uh, uh, something from a, uh, okay. a colleague agency, basically with the county. Uh, and if and when they do have a solid plan for Lucas Valley, the only take that the district would have would be any potential impacts on the services that we do provide and have jurisdiction over. Uh, and that would be it. Okay. So you said January 20th, February 10th, yep. but February 10th is more Lucas Valley Marinwood or? Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, yeah. kind of their uh, focus point. preliminary plans and proposals for this part of the unincorporated county. Okay. Yeah. I'll push some stuff out via social media on it. Uh, I'm just waiting for them to get it to me. Can you email it to me as well? Yeah. Just in case I miss it on social media. Thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah. I love it too. Yeah. Send it to everybody. <laughs> yep, I can. Uh, but again, uh, and Except you're, for encouraged, Bill. you're encouraged to attend, but you're attending as a, uh, a citizen of Marinwood Lucas Valley, not as a uh, representative of the district. My legal, so, uh, my, uh, our, our attorney would, would be, be very proud of me for telling you that. I will be on my best behavior. I don't care how you behave as long as they don't know you're part of us. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm sorry, Lisa, public comment. Public comment. Okay. Stephen. Yes. Uh, so, uh, board members, take note. Uh, the housing element is really quite important for uh, Lucas Valley and Marinwood. Uh, the last ha housing element identified, uh, I think, about 1,200 uh, living units uh, in our neighborhood um they're basically large apartment buildings um and the county uh because of the the change in housing laws they actually have to build or or see to it that uh, uh apartments are built in uh unincorporated marin and um i'm expecting most all of the housing to come to marin with lucas valley it literally could double or triple our population. I know that sounds amazing to you, uh, but it really is true. Um, the, the housing laws are crazy, and all we can hope for is something will happen where uh, we don't have this uh, just incredible growth um, in our neighborhoods. Obviously, that's going to affect the operation of Marinwood CSD, and it may actually lead to the, uh, you know, changing of our political boundaries uh, in Marinwood. Maybe we would become part of San Rafael. I don't know. It's a big issue. In other words, um, it, it does require leadership, a voice from the community, and we need to understand what's going on um, and, you know, let them know that we're paying attention and um, because the communities that ignore this are the ones that unfortunately get stuck with all the bad development. And um, we, we, of course, we want some development, but we want appropriate development. We don't want to be stuck with all the growth. I don't know where we're going to put it, but uh, there's, there's, there's big things on the books right now. So that's all I have to say. And, and so actually what I would like to say about future, um, uh, future meetings is that, um, yes, uh, discuss a vision. And actually um, one of the visions should be if we grow as a community, how will we want to grow? How will we want to grow uh, the Marinwood CSD? What additional services might we want to offer or not offer? Um, there's a, this is a time of great change. Thank you, Stephen. Um, all right, now can I ask for a motion to adjourn? Pretty motion to, to adjourn. Kathleen second. raised her hand just like that. Second. Right. Uh, call for a vote.
Board President Ruggieri. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oyserman. Aye. And Director Shea. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Lisa, thank you for uh, a great thank first meeting as your term of president. Uh, thank, thank you. you. you, you great job. along very well. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Thank, 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 thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam President. Well, thank you for, uh, for the guidance because I'm going to be fumbling for a while. So oh, appreciate uh, everyone's great. patience. Did a great job. Thank you. See you guys later. All right. Bye. See you guys later. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Recording stopped.